It's cute, it's cheap, it's airtight, it keeps the paint wet, and once you have the link, it's actually quite easy to find. Hey, welcome back to my channel. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs and vlogs. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about this adorable tiny gouache palette. Those of you who've seen Mike Jackson's haul, and if you haven't, I'll link that down below. You will know that my requirements for the palette I was looking for were quite simple. I wanted it to be airtight. I wanted it to be portable so that I could go and do plein air painting. And after watching an artist called Creating Cute Art on YouTube, I struggled to find it, eventually got it. So in this video, I'm going to be going through what colours I'm putting where and my thought process between which colours I choose and where I put them as well as reviewing the gouache palette giving you some tips and tricks in case you're thinking about doing the same on how to store your gouache and how to get the most out of it and we'll do a quick painting because why not. What's special about this palette is that in theory it is a stay wet palette which means that the gouache I'll add to it will remain the same consistency as if it's still in the tube so if you're creating the same thing basically what you'll want is your gouache paint your stay wet palette which i'll link down below a paper clip ideally metal a paper towel or a paint cloth and then something to spritz the paint with water or to add water to them this palette has 16 wells each one roughly the size of a half pan by the four corners that are slightly smaller it has a rubber component to keep an airtight seal and it comes as part of a set with an accompanying detachable cup that can expand this cup also has grooves at the top so that you can rest your brushes as well as holes on the side so that you can add up to three brushes when painting. All of this just basically makes it an ideal set for painting outdoors but what most attracted me to it was just the convenience of having the gouache easily accessible and still being safe. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was quite apprehensive about putting my expensive gouache into this palette because I was just worried that it would dry out or the quality would be compromised or it wouldn't work or it would spill. So I did quite a bit of research before I took the plunge and I actually added my paint to it, which is in part why it's taken me so long to make this video. But eventually after the research, I decided it's okay, I can risk it for a biscuit and I can add the gouache and I did this a few weeks ago and have been using it since. Another person who's been using it and has or has been using a similar one and has had good results is also Sarah Burns Studio out here on YouTube as well as Creating Cute Art who I've already mentioned. The paints that we're going to be adding are the Winsor & Newton Designer Gouache Introductory Set as well as five additional colours that I bought and I'll go into why I bought them a little later. The 10 colours that come in the introductory set are Primary Yellow, Permanent Yellow Deep, Yellow Ochre, Spectrum Red, Primary Red, Permanent Green Middle, Zinc White, Primary Blue, Ultramarine and Black. And then the additional five colours that I decided to get were Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Cobalt Turquoise Light, Prussian Blue and Permanent White. My thought process for this palette and putting it together was basically putting similar colours together and the arch that I showed you earlier was essentially the order that made sense to me and makes sense in my head. Basically starting with the yellows on one side, then having the reds and then having the neutrals and then having the blues on the other side. The whites in theory I would have rather had together but because I'm having two different types of white for the sake of avoiding confusion I just split them up in a way that again made sense to me I don't know why I was overthinking this bit so much like it literally took me so long to come up with this order but I'm really happy with the final layout and I hope that if you're watching this it will at least help you avoid spending as long as I did trying to figure this out especially if you paint similar things that I do in a way what I have is warm colors on one side and cool colors on the other in an order that I like the introductory set comes with both warm and cool versions of the primaries as well as black and a green. So it's very helpful if you're just starting out, you know, if you're quite new to gouache and you just want to see if you like it. Now I'm going to swatch out the palette and just tell you why I've picked the colours that I've chosen. I tend to like swatching all my palettes because the colours themselves tend to look different to when they're actually in the wells and it gives me a good idea of how the paints perform and I can keep it there for reference. As I mentioned, this set comes with both warm and cool versions of the primary colours and the reason that's good is just because it gives you more flexibility in terms of being able to mix nice vibrant colours and I can go more into what I mean by cool versus cold in a separate video if that's something you're interested in just let me know down below. 
I decided to add two neutrals slash browns and this was the burnt sienna and the burnt umber and the reason that I picked them is because I like using them in skin tones and I want to paint more portraits this year so that was um like a mindful decision but I also like painting landscapes and these are colours that I'm going to use over and over and over again so I thought it was an investment in getting these colours rather than trying to mix them all the time and also I quite like the colours that I get when I use them for mixing so when I use the burnt umber or burnt sienna for mixing I quite like those mixes that I get. The other colour that I decided to get was the cobalt turquoise light and I got this because it is beautiful <laughs> it was quite a vain decision it was just such a nice color and I think in part I'm also really missing the beach so I thought that you know I thought that this would be a beautiful color for the many seascapes that I plan on painting and again it will also save me the struggle of trying to mix this specific color then this primary blue which will make really nice bright greens and this ultramarine that will make beautiful purples also come with the set the next one that I got was the Prussian blue and I got this because I'm trying to use less black in my paintings especially because quite very few things are actually like jet black when you look at them and I feel like by using black quite often if I'm using pure black then I am um, almost like making my painting look a bit flatter I'm not like really experimenting with the colors or with the depth of shadows and I feel like my shadows always look better if I'm not using black in them, if I'm actually mixing them out of something else. So for that reason, I really wanted to get the Prussian blue and it is just so nice on its own. Like it's such a stunning, dark, rich color on its own. It works so nicely when mixed with other colors and also for shadows. Like I, I use it in almost every painting. The last color that I got separately was the permanent white. This is also known as titanium white. And to be honest, it's probably a bit extra having two whites like you definitely don't need two whites if you don't have them um and i will probably do a video looking at the difference between the two so that you can decide whether you you know which you prefer or whether you need to have two or whether you're just happy to have one but first impressions are that the titanium white is like a stronger white that works very nicely for highlights whereas the zinc white is a bit uh i find it a bit weaker like good for mixing and tinting colors right it doesn't overpower the color that i'm trying to create it just makes it a little bit lighter whereas the titanium white will almost completely change it so the titanium i reserve for highlights and the zinc i reserve for tinting for the most part but before I got the permanent white or the titanium white I would just use the zinc white and it was fine as well whatever white you have will do and I personally tend to use quite a lot of white which is why I dedicated three out of 16 wells to it and which is why I have four tubes of white two of them are large two of them are normal size and to be perfectly honest I had another tube that I've completely finished so yeah because essentially to keep the paints fresh we're going to be adding significant amounts of water over a long period of time I didn't want the paints to get completely diluted so I actually added some Winsor & Newton gum arabic which is quite often used to make gouache the part of the binder I think but I've seen that that's also recommended as something to do you don't have to do it straight away but it's something worth thinking about especially after you've used it for a prolonged period of time because by then you will have added a lot of water to your paints some tips for using this type of palette especially if you're setting up your own is to use the straightened end of a paper clip to just mix the paint together and get rid of any air bubbles wipe clean between each use and then repeat the alternative is to use a toothpick but obviously if you use a paper clip then you can just use the same one and keep wiping it rather than waste toothpick but again use what you have some tips for keeping a good consistency of the paint is to shut the paint when you're painting with it. As you'll see later on, I left it completely wide open underneath my studio lights and still it was okay, but it just meant that it kind of got closer to drier quicker and I had to spritz it with water more often than I would have if I just left it a bit ajar in between the uses that being said if you want to leave it completely open you can that's what i did because i kept forgetting to close it it will be fine you just have to remember to spritz it with water quite often the next thing to be aware of is that each color will have a different consistency and each color will have a different amount of binder and will dry differently so for example for me the prussian blue just tends to dry a lot quicker than all the other colors so 
they will need different amounts of water so just be mindful sometimes you may have to spritz one color a bit more than the other that's completely fine and it's also completely normal the other thing that i do that's kind of kept the consistency right is just spritzing them with water when i'm starting and as i say just remembering to add bits of water as i'm working and this is just clean water ideally distilled although i didn't use distilled water I just used normal water and it was fine and if you're not going to use them then just opening them up and again spritzing them with water like once a week or so just to keep the paints nice and moist and to keep the right consistency throughout Another thing to be aware of is that the more paints you have in the wells, the longer it's going to take for them to dry. So resist the urge to just put this tiny drop of paint into those wells because that will dry a lot quicker than if you actually had the wells almost full. I know it's counterintuitive and I know that I was scared to do it because I was like, if this doesn't work, then I'm going to lose even more paint, but it actually worked quite nicely. And I should say that what I mean by spritz is that I have like one of these atomizer bottles that I got for I think like two pounds from Jackson's and I basically add water to them and just use it to spray water onto it. Before I had that I would just use a paintbrush to just drop bits of clean water onto them. Some other things that you want to be aware of is just to avoid mold. And there are a few ways that you can do that and I was quite worried about this and thankfully I haven't had an issue with it at all but just to make sure that you also don't have an issue these are the key tips first of all you want to try and use distilled water but as I said <laughs> I don't do that and it's been fine but in theory using distilled water or bottled water will decrease your risk of developing mold you also want your paints to have some airtime where the palette isn't completely airtight even if it's just like a jar and a bit closed as long as it isn't like completely tight that's good for me that happens to be when i'm painting it's just like out and open the other thing is to add water only to keep the paint moist and to get the paint to the right consistency that you want don't go like overboard don't just start adding lots and lots and lots and lots of water and then shutting it tight because that is just like feeding ground for bacteria and for mold and then the other thing is if you're not going to be painting for a while you're not going to be able to open it for a while or to use the paint or let it air out then another thing that you can consider doing is adding clove bod oil so when i was creating this palette as i mentioned i was really apprehensive so i literally went ott <laughs> I went OTT with like these pre mold preventative measures and I actually added clove bud oil even though I knew I was going to be using the palette I just added it right at the start and to be perfectly honest this was unnecessary <laughs> this was clearly unnecessary and now my paints have the light fragrance of clove bud oil which doesn't bother me but if it is something that's going to bother you that's something to bear in mind only add it if you need it not if you don't but if you are going to use your palette you are going to be able to keep it moist every so often and you are going to be able to like let it air out then you don't need to add the clove bud oil at the time of making this video, I've used this palette for a few weeks with no issue. The paints haven't dried out, I haven't seen any mould. Um, with regards to the pros and cons of this palette, a clear pro is just the portability. You're able to carry 16 different colours of good quality gouache around without hauling around 16 tubes, as well as the fact that they're roughly half pan size. So you can get just about half a tube of paint, so i.e. like 8 mils inside comfortably. It's airtight and thus the paints have maintained their consistency, which is amazing. And though you're required to add a bit of water in order to continue to maintain that, it hasn't leaked through, which is again great. And it allows me to use what I need rather than pouring out gouache onto a palette and just trying to guesstimate all the time what I'm going to use and what I'm not going to use. It's also made me paint a bit more freely because all the colours are there. So it's not like I have to go and get it. If, you know, if I want to add like a tiny bit of red, normally I would just do without if it wasn't on the palette already whereas now it's there I can use it I don't have to worry about you know pouring out a tiny tiny bit of a color that I wasn't using before and potentially wasting them so I've experimented a lot more with the colors because they are right in front of me which is great and as a byproduct I don't know if this is really a pro but as a byproduct of my fear of the paint drying out I've used my gouache a lot more frequently like I've literally been free painting a lot more frequently and also it's a lot easier to set up it's just there and ready to go some of the cons that I'll highlight is that 
if you overdo it with the water some of it may leak through so just be mindful of that normal paint is fine and i haven't had any normal paint leak at all but it's just if you add water and it's i think it's going to be up to you to know exactly how much water to add but for me it's just to get it to the consistency that it was before it was in the tube and sometimes you'll find if you leave it for a few days that the top is just a little bit tougher you just want to add enough to kind of dissolve that tough layer another con is that there isn't really like a mixing space i guess in theory that white top could be used for a mixing palette but then you'd also have that rubber thing on top of it and that would just create a mess let's see how it goes turning it upside down i don't recommend this but just in case it's in a bag and that happens what's going to happen when you open it and you'll recall i still struggle to open this but again i don't think it's this i think it's me because sometimes i open it fine and other times it's a little bit of a struggle the only paint color that keeps going up to the top is this one and to be fair it's been doing that since the very beginning so it's still quite um it's just been quite liquidy the whole time but everything else seems relatively okay can you see some of the red got into the white but otherwise i think it's okay I wonder if this bit is necessary because that's what was making it so hard it's almost like it created a seal and then obviously every time I open it it's a little bit messy I get paint on my hand but I feel like without this gummy bit the paint will go everywhere all in all I love this palette and I can confirm that as a result of it I've literally painted a lot more um so it was a worthwhile investment for me and my art journey if you're interested in getting the same one then I'll leave a link in the description and you can get 10% off if you're a first time buyer as it's an affiliate link as well it really does help out the channel so thank you for buying it through there or just for having a look I must also say that I bought a few of these palettes because I want to use one for like my Himimiya gouache because the current set is massive um I also kind of want to make a custom palette with different colors and I think that this will also work really nicely for my watercolors so for example I have Daniel Smith tubes that I also want to try adding into those as well so I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that you found it useful and entertaining. Thank you so much for watching. If you've come this far, then you are most definitely a real MVP and I really, really appreciate you. It means so much to me to know that I am not talking to myself. Let me know if you've made it this far by telling me what your... Oh, by telling me what your favourite gouache or watercolour brand is down below in the comments. And then that way I will know to give you an extra special thank you. Thank you so much and I will see you next week. Bye. It almost looks like a Rubik's Cube, no? Okay, so moment of truth. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's really... <laughs> gosh, okay, it's not, I think... Much, much later. <laughs> I honestly think it's because I'm on camera. Give me one second. What the...